Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's fur video. We're going to have a look at weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's fur video. Day 10 will take us 24th of January. And uh, we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended ship air. So instead of ensembles, maybe once around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. Gets us into first half of February. And uh, I shall get to that for you in a moment. Just to say that first video series series our 6 10 UK weather forecast. And we've also released the extended European outlook as well. Check out those two things if you'd like to do that. Like, share, and subscribe on all today's videos and content. And thank you so much, everyone, for doing that for gals or whether it's feeling a little bit better today. Still not very good with the eyes, though. So, limiting at screen time uh, again today. Um, we'll get there. And I will be hopefully live streaming uh, tomorrow at 6 p.m. if you're waiting for a gals or whether it's live. Anyway, let's crack on with today's video. So, I'm going to start off with central in temperature. The CT is uh, now sitting at 1.6. That's 2.2 degrees below the 61 to 1990 average. About 3 degrees below the uh, 91 to 2020 average. That's for visual to yesterday to the 13th of January. It's ticked up a little bit, I think, that from the day before. But nevertheless, still uh, really cold. And going to be uh, significantly uh, below average for the first sort of 15 days of the first half of uh, January. We wait to see where we go from there. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles on Norwich today. The red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for Norwich. We're starting off, of course, above average with high pressure at the moment. We see the upper air temperatures coming down as we go through into uh, next week. Notice the thick green line, which is the uh, GFS seat set operation run, uh, falling away there. But it does fall away with the control run as well for a time. So we could be in for some colder weather maybe uh, next week. There has been an idea. We've been watching the uh, 10 to 14 days over the past few days. There is an idea within some of the bottle output anyway for a Scandinavian high and an easterly wind into the last week of January. The reason I've chosen Norwich for uh, the ensembles today is that if the wind does go into the east, Norwich will be <laughs> one of the first places to uh, feel those winds coming in from the Urals. And um, and there it is. On the GFS 6, they'll be doing that, bringing in uh, a cold easterly. So we are still flirting with a Scandinavian at the moment. Do -do -do! Um, and who would want to do that? Uh, so, precipitation <laughs> wise, a lot of dry weather over the next few days. He's back on form, he's back on form. Um, a lot of dry weather over the next few days, but uh, good turn more and settle next week. Just look overly wet, but I have to say that is a pretty dry ensemble graph for like middle of winter. How snow row looking for Norwich? There's a few little spikes beginning to appear there. With those easterly winds about the 24th, 25th of January. You never know, we might get a little bit of snow um, uh, before the 8th of January again. We might get it cold. No temperature, obviously, again, unfortunately, today. So we're moving straight on to the latest wind from Earth, no school net. So, uh, so again, we have changed wind direction. We've lost that cold northerly that dominated much of the first 12 days of January. We've replaced it with a southwest. But winds are very light across England and Wales. And this is like a perfect scenario for inversion as we go through this week. So we've got to watch those temperatures, see whether they start getting uh, unexpectedly colder, such as happened during Christmas of the New Year, if uh, we do get an inversion going later on in the week. Hold on. <coughs> So sorry, everyone. Right, let's start getting through the chart data. Then, this our latest UK Met Euro run is looking to be tight on Friday. High pressure is to the south, low pressure to the north. We're drawing up a mild southwest wind, especially to the north and to the west. Now, the high pressure gradually weakens into the weekend. There's lower pressure against heading for the Atlantic. Not particularly low pressure, but lower pressure is heading in from the Atlantic. That's a scenario for choose. Looking a bit more unsettled. Notice heights are beginning to rise a little bit in the far north of the Atlantic, going up towards Greenland. That's probably not all that far away. I'm trying to set up another cold spell. Um, we've got low pressure down towards the Azores there, so the NEO going negative uh, again with that. High pressure up towards Iceland and Greenland. Um, if we was to push this low, 
in this direction. Again, the problem is the heights around here. Got a low of those, but if he wants to push the um, of that uh, that low in that direction, then uh, with the high pressure beginning to fall around Green Iceland, possibly we could start getting wind back into a colder north or the north east. Bit speculative, but it's one of those charts that could go in that direction. Icon uh, again uh, looking mostly dry over the rest of this week and into the weekend. High pressure gradually weakening through the weekend. So by the start of next week, beginning to turn a little bit more showery. And then that takes us to next Tuesday when um, Pastel King, uh, well, it's not as close to pulling in something colder as the UK met. Looking a bit of a mess, to be honest, and probably turning showery, I would say, if not particularly unsettled. Right, well, this is how the uh, KMA is looking. Again, high pressure retreating away to Eastern Europe over the weekend. So next week turns more unsettled, but the high pressure soon coming back again. So that's a setup by the 26th of January. High pressure is dominating over Poland, but sending a ridge out to Western Europe, fending off these areas of low pressure in the Atlantic. We're in a generally mild ish sort of southerly flow. No Scandi. Right, let's move on to a uh, GFS midnight run. Once more, that has high pressure edging away to the east over weekend. A lower pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. But not for long. By the middle of next week, we're back under this ridge of high pressure, which is, which is, which is a cold, quite a cold ridge as well. Now, the GFS midnight run, day 9 and 10, taking the high pressure up to Scandinavia. So it does, in fact, form a Scandinavian high. Low pressure being blocked in the Atlantic. Wind coming up from probably quite a chilly southerly southeasterly direction. Backing into the southeast by the 25th of January. And it looks like we're all set and pulling <laughs> to have a easy blast. But then this low deepens like mad in the Atlantic and uh, brings a spell of wet and windy weather. However, we do start to pull in those easterly winds. So by the end of GFS Big Dyke Run, looks like we're about to start turning the wind to the east courtesy of that Scandinavian high. But GFS 6 then, by comparison, we know this is going to go cold around day 10. Let's see how it happens. It happens with Scandinavian high. I've already uh, told you that. So um, anyway, we've got high pressure building in through the early part of next week. Quite a cold ridge of the frost under that high pressure. And then, and then, and then, and then, what happens to the high pressure? It goes to Scandinavia. Winds start to switch room to the east. And there we are by day 10. Looks so easy, doesn't it? I Believe me, it's not that easy. <laughs> and so many things can go wrong in that evolution. But uh, the GFS sits there making it look easy with a proper Scandinavian high at about 1,050 millibars and a proper easterly wind as well. Check out the upper air temperatures. There's a pool of minus 10 Celsius at 850 HPA. Upper air temperature sitting. Chiwa is flooding into the west of Europe on those easterly winds. Proper easterly blast there um, through the course of uh, Friday the 24th of January. That will bring snow showers in from the east along with those easterly winds. And then Missalow starts forming down around Biscay uh, and pushes northwards. That could bring a significant snow event over the weekend of the 25th and the 26th of January. So, a very, very, very interesting GFS 6 head run, to say the least. If that came off, I think that would lock us into a uh, cold of an average January as well, by the way. Well, beyond that, we switch the wind around to more of a southerly, so it is a milder direction, but probably still quite cold, to be honest. Not till the very end of GFS 6 head run, but we begin to get more of a southwesterly uh, going. So, that is uh, bringing some milder air in then from off the Atlantic. Uh, right, okay, well, if you enjoyed the video, please you like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for everyone for doing that. Why not drop a comment? Let's know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gals, whatever it is, and get them to subscribe too. And we thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. We only need to put around 10 subscribers to get to 19.4k. We are so close, so, so close to 19.4k. So if you could give us a sub, that'd be absolutely awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Love it. Right, GM, again, with high pressure building from the south over weekend, or through this week into the weekend, they're weakening by the end of weekend, or lower pressure edging in from off the Atlantic, not with much conviction, day 10, we're mild with both southwest winds, high pressure south and deep low pressure 
around Greenland and Iceland. And then the ECM, it looks like that all much of much this for the week. Um, gradually weakening the high pressure start of next week, but not convincingly unsettled at all. Um, now, this looks uh, quite poor. You just have high pressure towards Scandinavia like the GFS is doing. But this is what can go wrong <laughs> with the evolution. The GFS 6, as I said, made it look, made it look very, very, very easy. This is what can go wrong. So the high pressure is there, the ridge, on Wednesday, that uh, the GFS then sends up to Scandinavia. And it looks like we are trying to build some heights over Scandinavia there on Thursday. But notice these purple colours in the North Atlantic. That's the polar vortex deepening like mad, going crazy. And so uh, that, unfortunately, sent, or fortunately, depending on your point of view, sends a lot of energy through the North Atlantic towards Scandinavia. And so any attempt to build a Scandi high, um, you know, just comes to uh, nothing. And then we're into a flat westerly flow through to months end with the ECM up today. A visual precipitation forecast based on the ECM run from Tometro.com. Lots of but dry weather on offer over the next few days. A little bit showery at times, especially in the north and west, but not much. And by day 10, that's when we bring our first proper band of wet weather in from off the Atlantic. So relatively dry, to be honest, for this time of the year. These are the options on the table within the ECM Ensemble today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. Gets us to the 24th of January. 15 members of the ECM Ensembles with a Scandinavian high and look like they'll be getting wind into the uh, east there. We've got 14 bringing low pressure in from off the Atlantic, all wet and windy. And then we've got a Another 14, low pressure again to the west. A little bit strong with high pressure or Scandinavia, but it's the low pressure that's dominating the scene. And then we've got eight with high pressure between Scandinavia and Greenland. Low pressure down here. That could be quite cold and windy if we get an undercut uh, from the east. That might bring some snow to some parts of the country. So it's 15 and 8, but look potentially cold at day 10. It's 14 and 14, but look at my wet windy at day 10. Take a bit. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. Gets us to the 29th of January. 27 members of the ECM on sites with deep low pressure in the Atlantic, keeping it mild, wet and windy. 12 with high pressure towards Scandinavia, bringing the wind in for a cold easterly direction. And uh, number 12, which makes, uh, which makes 24, doesn't it? With high pressure blocking between green and Scandinavia, low pressure down here. And uh, that could be quite cold as well. Could be wintry, maybe with some snow. Of the south. So it really is poised, this. Um, within the ECM ensembles, we see that the majority option at both day 10 and day 14 is in favour of the uh, mild up wetter winter outcome, but a very, very significant minority definitely trying to build the heights over Scandinavia and get the wind into the uh, east. So we've got to keep a close eye on this end of January, final week of January period, I think, as I've been saying in the videos lately. We continue to flirt with both Scandinavians. CFSB2 uh, looks like this. So these are 500 millibar high times break down week periods. The first week period takes from the 14th to the 20th of January with high pressure dominating the scene and in the ascendancy week two. All change. It's the 21st, 27th of January. No Scandi. Uh, we're just into wet, windy weather from off the Atlantic there. Pretty mild as well. Week three <laughs> will be 28th of January, 3rd of February, keeping it mild, wet, windy. And then uh, week four will be the 4th to the 10th of February. Low pressure in the Atlantic, high pressure down towards Spain, and in comes those southwest winds. CFS continues to look mild for the foreseeable there. I just want to end up with the uh, Strat. Now, where's that gone? Blimey, I don't know. <laughs> I thought I got that all set up, so I don't know what's happened there. So let's just go here, go here. Sorry about this, everybody. I uh, want to go ba -ba 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 to there and to there. Right, uh, so this is the latest in terms of the strategy. I haven't looked at that for a little while, but we will be doing strap watch tomorrow. Uh, very cold stratospheric temperatures at 10 HBA um, over in the strategy over the North Atlantic into Northern Europe. They go down to minus 92. Goodness gracious me, that is extremely cold. But over Poland itself, it's not as cold as that. So the polar vortex kind of displaced out the pole a little bit into uh, the North Atlantic 
and northern parts of Europe there at the moment. Let's run through. So the coldest have been, uh, up, have been strategic temperatures moving more towards Russia and uh, into Siberia, actually. As uh, so we go on through the course of uh, next week in the extended range. We've still got blue and purple colours, which are cold temperatures at 10 HPA, photo vortex, saturated photo vortex, well and truly, um, uh, you know, well and truly entrenched and whatnot. But we do start to pick up a little bit of a warming here towards the end of January again over uh, Siberia. And that starts to push towards the uh, North Pole as well. That's the 30th of January. Displacement event continuing of the photo vortex really through North Atlantic into northern parts of Europe. Not as intensely cold as it is right now, but, you know, photo vortex still weren't truly in a business there and um and yeah so we just have to wait and see where we go after that with those uh stratospheric temperatures no sign of ssw within the next two weeks there on uh, this gfs run we're going to do stretch watch tomorrow that will be released at midday so that will be an interesting watch tomorrow We'll see. Right, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Make sure to show everyone for doing that. Drop a comment. Let's know if you about this and all my videos and content. Don't forget to tell your friends about guys. Whether you get them, subscribe to show to everyone for doing that. Tomorrow, we're going to have 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. We've got episode 7, is it? I think it is. What episode 8? I lose count. Anyway, we've got Strap Watch coming up. <laughs> episode 7 or 8 of Strap Watch coming up tomorrow at midday. And then we will be live at 6 p.m. Even if I've got to get up and get bed. We'll be live at 6 p.m. We are 10 to 14 days, so I shall see you uh, for that one. For this one, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, and bye for now.